Okay, so I want to do a really quick crash course in Nomad Sculpt. Uh, I just made this in Procreate. So we're going to make this in Nomad Sculpt. This is nice and simple, and it's a good intro, a quick intro for Nomad Sculpt. So I'm going to save this image. So I'm now going to go into Nomad Sculpt. And this is some derivative of this is what you'll see when you open up Nomad Sculpt. We have our grid here. We have our shape. And if you wanted to delete this shape, if you wanted to start with a different shape, you would go up here to this option here and you see your scene. So your scene is everything that you've created, like your whole project, like that's your scene. Uh, this is called a mesh. So this is a 3D mesh sphere. You only have one mesh in your scene right now. All you have is this 3D sphere and that's it. Uh, simple. Let me make sure that this. So let's say you want to get rid of this. We're in our scene. You can just hit delete. And primitives are what meshes are called. So they're what these shapes are called uh, before you sculpt them. So in their most purest form, when you bring in a new shape, let's say you want to bring in a sphere, uh, this is your primitive sphere, just a sphere. Um, you can move it around, you can adjust it. The gizmo is very important. This little thing right here is a gizmo. You can move it up and down, left and right, forward and back. Now you notice it's getting bigger and smaller. And this is very important. So that's perspective. So when it goes back in perspective, it gets smaller. And when it comes forward, it gets bigger. And that can be sort of annoying when you're trying to sculpt. So we're going to change that. See this little camera option here? We're going to tap that and we're going to go orthographic. Now, I think it's a good rule of thumb to sculpt in orthographic. And essentially what that means is it just gets rid of the perspective. That's it. So just remember this little toggle here and go to orthographic uh, when you start that way you don't have to deal with perspective and another important tool see this little cube here pretty self-explanatory you can move it around it moves your scene and you can also tap and it will go to you know whatever direction this way so you always know that this is the front of your mesh you know if you want to look at it from the top uh, you can do whatever you have to do so this is a very useful little little tool. Uh, and also notice the perspective is gone. So now the horizon line is just a straight line. That's it. Okay, so you might be wondering why I can't really do too much with this right now. Um, when you bring in a new shape, you have to validate it before you can use all of your tools. So right now you only see these basic tools um, because it's not validated. So when you validate it, it's essentially you're committing to use this shape in your project. Um, so now you can, you can only do very primitive things like make it smaller, make it bigger. Um, but when you validate it, then you can use all of your tools. Okay, so I don't want it to be, I just want it to be a regular sphere. So I'm going to keep it like that and I'm going to validate it. Notice I just hit two finger tap to undo uh, and also undo is down here so you can undo and redo uh, just like normal so let's tap front okay so we have our sphere and we want to make that little character that i was drawing so i'm going to bring that in using this button here so i'm going to tap that and you'll see reference image I'll tap reference image and then i'm going to tap the photo there and then hit plus. So now I'm gonna bring in that image and then I'm gonna hit add. So now we've brought in we brought in the image and you can transform it. This is very important, just transform it if you wanna make it a little smaller up here. I think that's perfect. And then you just tap and now you're back to your back to your scene. So now we have my little reference image. If you're just gonna play around, then obviously you don't have to bring in a reference image, but I think this is a nice a cute character to start with. So when you're thinking about 3D, uh, essentially you just wanna think about, okay, what shapes do I see with the character? Uh, that's the most important thing to, to think in those terms. What shapes do I see? So we kinda have a sphere here, 
but it's a little flat on the sides and it's very flat on the bottom, but it's round on top. So we just wanna do that with the sphere. So first I'm just gonna move it up because it bugs me when it's touching the horizon line like that. So I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. So you can take your tools. I use the move tool a lot. I think it's very, very useful. So the move tool is right here. So essentially the move tool, um, all of your tools, the, the controls for them are on this side. So this is the size of the move. So if I go like this, so this is the size of it. If I make it really big, then obviously it's really big. So I'm just gonna undo. And this is the intensity. So that's just how strong the brush is. So if I wanna flatten the bottom side, you can just push on it from below. So I'm gonna make my brush fairly big and I'm gonna turn on symmetry and I'm just gonna push up from the bottom and see how it flattens it out. Just like that. So nice, now it's nice and flat on the bottom, but you can see it's a little too stubby. So then you can use your gizmo again. Gizmo is very, very useful. And we'll just stretch it using this sphere. So the arrows will move it in the desired direction. That's what the arrows do. And don't forget it's 3D, so you also have forwards and backwards. Uh, but the little spheres, that stretches and pulls. So I'm gonna just stretch this to about there. That looks about right. And you can see that to the top of the head's a little rounder. So I'm gonna go back to the move tool. It doesn't need to be too big, but I'm just gonna pull here and just make it a little rounder. You can even push in a little bit on the sides. So I think that's a good match for this character. So I'm gonna hit view. Uh, view is just basic, so you can kind of look at what you've done. When I turn it, you see that it's a little bit off. So let me snap to the right side and I'll just do the same thing. I'll just use my move tool and I'll just push this side up. Like so. Let me check the back. The back, we see a little bend here. So I can just, I can either pull the middle down with the move tool or I can push the sides up. So I think that looks pretty good. So let's go back to the front and I think that looks good. So if you can do that, then that's a good place to start for making and sculpting uh, because everything is everything can pretty much be derived from a, a shape. So that's a good basic start. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do, you see the arms and the legs they're just spheres too. So let's add some new spheres. Oops. So we wanna to go to this option here. Uh, the first option is where you can save and export and things like that. The second one is where you can add a new sphere, like so. So let's shrink it. See this orange ring here? That just makes it bigger and smaller stays in the center, just makes it bigger and smaller. So we can make that small and we can slide it over since we're matching this. But since it has this other leg here, that's what we can use the mirror for. Mirror is a great, uh, it's really good because most of the things, faces, um, arms, legs, things like that, when you wanna make two, then you can just do mirror and it mirrors it. And you see when you move it, everything is mirrored. Uh, just be careful, you don't want to validate them too close together because sometimes they get stuck together and it winds up uh, with some artifacts. It doesn't look good. So just be careful of that. Just don't validate them if they're too close together. Whoops. Okay, so I think these look pretty good. We can, we can actually stretch them out. Um, but it, this stuff can be done with validate as well. So I'll just validate them. So now we have the two legs here. Let's bring them up a little bit. And maybe we'll make them a little bigger. And also, 
Uh, another useful thing with the with the gizmo, see these rings, the red ring here, the green ring, and the blue ring? Uh, that's just your axis. So you can move it, you can move your shapes like that. And even though I have these straight down, let's make them a little smaller. And maybe we want to give them a little bend like that. So I'll just tap view so we can see, and then we can just go around and we can see. And remember it's 3D, so you have to figure out if you want the legs to be further forward or further back. Um, you can tap on, notice here, anything you tap on, like if you wanted to go back and change uh, the bigger sphere, then you would tap on it, and then you would just move that, that part. You can tap on the legs and it will move that part. Oops like so and if you notice that your shapes are getting darker uh, that's just an option that you can take away or uh, keep uh, it's when you it's when you touch an option and everything else turns darker that option is right here dark and unselected meshes so just remember this cog up here dark and unselected meshes so if you notice that yours is going like this whatever mesh you're working with will be light everything else will turn dark I personally don't like it. That's why I don't have it on. But I just want to show you in case that's happening. And also, I think I want to bring his legs a little bit backwards. So I'm going to tap on his legs, tap on the gizmo, and just push them back a little bit. So the next thing we'll do is these arms. And there's a little trick. You can make things easier. Uh, firstly, so we're on the scene again. And if you want to change the name of these so we don't get them confused, like this one will be body. You just tap the little pencil here. This one can be legs. Uh, that way you don't get confused. Obviously you can uh, move them up and down, but it doesn't matter. It's not like when you, if you move it up, this one is in front or something like that. It's literally just the order of, of, your, of your layers. Of course, this turns off the layer and this duplicates the, duplicates the layer. So for the arms, they're about the same as the legs, so let's just hit duplicate right here. And we'll call this one arms, just so we don't get it confused. And we'll use the gizmo to bring it up. See them, there's the arms. And now obviously these shapes are together, but it's two separate shapes. So you can go back here and then you can go to separate. So you go to separate and now we have two of these arms. And then you can move them accordingly. So I'm going to tap on this one and then we'll just move it to where we want it. And I'll sort of move this around so we can get a good gauge of like where we want to put his little arm. So maybe something like this. Maybe we'll stretch it out and maybe we'll just tilt it and bring it out a little bit, something like that. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll tilt it forward a little bit. There we go. And then this one, we'll tap on that one. And let's say we just want to have this kind of down by his side. So let's move it over. We'll stretch it out like we did the other one, like this. And then we'll just move it down and move it over. And we'll just tilt it so it's sort of going into his body. Okay, that looks pretty good. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add the eyes and the mouth. Um, and obviously, we've used a lot. We've used all spheres, but all the all the shape all the shapes, they all act in the same way. So like, if you have a cylinder, it'll be a cylinder. You can make it bigger or smaller. Cone, bigger or smaller. Uh, they all act in the same way as the cylinder. Let's just add some quick eyes. So we'll add another sphere. So we'll bring it up, bring it down, and let's bring it forward. So we haven't validated it yet because we're going to make it smaller and we're going to mirror it. And then we're going to make it a little bit smaller. 
So maybe something like that. So we can validate it. And then we'll move it back into his head. Maybe we want it a little bit closer. So maybe something like that. And you can always... There we go, that looks cute. So we wanna color them black. So if you wanna color it, uh, there's the painting tool which you can paint with, but if you wanna just color the whole shape, just go down here to this little sphere, you can tap it, and then you have, there's some, some pre-made colors, and then you can just do your color here. So obviously, um, this is gonna be also your texture of whatever the surface is. So since this eye, let's make it glossy. So we'll just choose like the glossy black. See, roughness makes it rougher and glossy makes it glossy, obviously. And then we just do paint all. So that'll paint everything. Uh, metalness, that's if you want it to look like metal, uh, but we'd have to change the color for that. Turn the metalness up, you know, it could be kind of like a golden color or something like that. So that's what metalness is. But we want no metalness and no roughness, and we want black. Do we want completely black? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do completely black. Okay, so, and since we've done that, we could paint the body, but I might, I might um, wait to paint the body because I'm going to mesh all of these shapes together, which is the, I think the last thing, one of the last things that we'll do for this quick, quick, not so quick video. So now we have the eyes, they're looking pretty good. Remember, you can still tap on them and you can still use the gizmo if you decide, oh, they need to be, you know, closer together. So now the next thing is the mouth. So what shape would you say for a mouth? It could either be a sphere cut in half, but I think a cylinder cut in half would be better because if you use a sphere, then the front end will be like round. It'll be a bit strange. So I think for that, a cylinder would be better. So let's use a cylinder and we'll go ahead and paint it black. See, we have this black line through. Uh, I'm just gonna tap and then do paint all. So now it's black, and we're gonna use our gizmo to rotate it forward. And obviously we wanna make it smaller, but now it's inside the body, so let's use the green to bring it out. And we'll bring it up to where the mouth is. And this is good for now. So let's tap front, and I'm just gonna turn this so it's pretty much facing straight at camera like that. So we want to cut it in half because we want to make that that mouth shape. So I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to validate it. I'm going to tap front. It doesn't need to be that big, but that's fine. So we'll use the trim tool. So we'll tap the trim tool. You have all these options here. And with these options, once you make whatever shape it is, it's just going to trim that shape. It's not gonna split. The difference between trim and split, split will maintain both sides. Trim will just trim whatever you do. So trim, I'm gonna use the rectangle uh, just to make it easier. So, and also make sure that you don't tap on any other mesh because then it'll trim that mesh. You wanna be on the mesh that you're working on. See the cylinder, I'll rename it mouth. Okay, we're on the mouth, trim, rectangle. There we go. So now we have this half. And another thing you'll notice that I do all the time is I use smooth. And it's kind of dark because you can't see. See how it's really, really soft? It's actually moving it a lot. Let me just change the color so you can see it change the color so you can see it so sometimes you might you might be trying to smooth things and you're like man it really ruins ruins the shape and the, re the reason why it does that 
is because um, when you make a primitive, it's not very dense. So if I wanted to smooth this out, I would have to go up to this next window. So here's the, sh the one that we've been using for this next window. And see, this cylinder is only 4,499, so it's not very dense. So you're not going to be able to do a lot of fine details. This might be confusing right now, but eventually you will start to subdivide, which means it'll take the density and then it'll multiply it. So it'll multiply it, but that will raise, that'll give your scene what you may have heard of as more polygons. If you subdivide this three times, four times, you can do a lot of fine details, but your scene is gonna have a lot of polygons and everything is gonna get a lot bigger. And you can run into complications. So just be, just be aware of that. But subdivide will allow you to do more details. We don't need a lot because this is just a simple shape like this and it looks pretty good. I don't need to do, do much to it. So I'm just bringing it up and I'm just gonna tilt it, make it smaller. We look at our reference, it's up pretty high, smaller, maybe something like this. Maybe we squish it together. So let's stretch it out a little bit and then let's, there we go. So something like that. And then we'll just slide it in like so. So we'll just slide it in like that. And that looks pretty cute. And just to give you an idea of um, the what I was saying before about subdividing. So let's take the body and let's say I want to use the crease tool. So the crease tool just makes a crease. So I'm going to I just going to I'm just going to use the crease tool just to kind of show you uh, the difference. And let's color it. So I'm going to use this and this is just for demonstra demonstrative purposes. I don't think I've ever used that word. See, I'm trying to use the crease and it's really like not pretty at all. So if I was to tap on this and then I was to go here and subdivide, now it's 24.5K. So let's do the same thing. A little bit better, still messy. So now I'm gonna go back there, subdivide again. Now it's 98.3. So it's pretty clear, pretty nice. Make it smaller. See, a lot clearer. And let's see what happens if we subdivide again. So it's very clear cut. So that's what subdividing is. It just allows you to get greater detail, but we don't really need it with this perp with this uh, simple shape. So I'm just making it smaller. Okay, so next, I think he's looking great. The next thing you, you want to do is when you make shapes like this, and you wanna you don't want to have separate shapes. Once you've once you've organized them and you have them together, uh, so we want to mesh the body, the arms, and the legs, not the eyes and stuff. We don't want to worry about that. That's separate, but the body we can put together. So body, legs, arms, these are the eyes, looks like, and this is the mouth. So we don't want any of those, just the arms and the leg. And I like to voxel remiss at 200, around 200. So let's voxel merge. And what that does is that makes everything, that brings everything together. Now, just so you know, there's voxel merge and there's simple merge. Simple merge, it merges everything but it's still separate. You can see that it's not really connected. You're not gonna be able to smooth it out. It's not gonna look like one shape. That is when you, well, let me undo. That's when you do voxel merge. Voxel merge, now it's all one. So I'm just gonna name this body. All one shape, voxel merge. You can see these little, all of these uh, artifacts here. And you need to smooth all of those out. So we're just gonna use the smooth tool. We're gonna make it fairly big. So now we can smooth everything out.
And sometimes you have to be careful because obviously I still have symmetry on. So you see it's it's smoothing here, but it's also doing the same thing on this side. It's not a big deal because this is a simple shape. But, you know, if it's something more complicated that you don't want the other side, then you take off symmetry and then it will only do the one side that you're working on. Because obviously our, our shape now isn't symmetrical, so. Okay, I'll turn symmetry back on because the rest of this is mostly symmetrical. So now I'm just smoothing it out and you see everything sort of just blends into each other and starts to look like one cohesive. And the reason why I subdivide at 200 is because, oops, I know I'm making this upside down. The reason why I do it at 200 is because it brings everything together, but it doesn't make it too dense to where everything is fairly solid. If I was to subdivide at like 500 or something, or 600, if you subdivide higher, or, or if you, not subdivide, if you voxel remesh higher, so if I was to if I was to bring this resolution up really high, then uh, the clay will just be harder. Um, and I like when the clay is soft. That way I can smooth everything out and it looks nice and smooth. So I keep everything low until I want to do a lot of fine details. Then I'll subdivide it and make the mesh big. So here we go, cute little character. Uh, and, and I'll use uh, the flatten tool. I really like the flatten tool. So we'll, bring, we'll make the brush a little bit bigger just for his little feet. So I just want to flatten out the feet. So I'll just do a circular motion. You can see it sort of just flattens out the bottom. Whoop. I kind of want it to be flat. Um, another way that I can make them flat is I hit front. Again, very useful. Trim. And then I can just use trim and I can just trim, trim off the bottom. And then I can use smooth. And I can do something like this. There we go. So now that we have that, um, we can always add some other shapes. So let's go ahead and add uh, just for the heck of it, we'll add a box here and we'll shrink it a little bit. So I'm going to tap front and then I'm going to bring it right up and I'm going to, there you go. So it looks like he's standing on a little box. I'll validate the box. I think that looks pretty good. And if you want, you can you can soften it or you can just leave it as a regular box. I tend to I tend to like my boxes a little softened, the edges. And I'm doing this really, really light because it's, again, like I said, it's not, uh, if I subdivide it, if I go here and subdivide, then it's, a, see the clay is a little harder, so it's not so, uh, malleable but that's good because I don't want it to really get too warped okay so now he's on his little box let's add another shape let's add let's add a cylinder so we'll add a cylinder we'll shrink it we'll make it bigger we'll shrink it again and then we'll bring it down so maybe something like this and we'll validate it. Okay, I think that looks pretty cute. And now we can just, uh, let's color these. So let's make this one, um, we'll make it like a sort of grassy color right here. And we can see what roughness we want. And let's make this little square, let's make it like a pink. So something like that. Oops, I forgot to hit paint all. And for him, let's say we want to keep him white. 
And do we want him rough or do we want him... Let's make him kind of rough. There we go, something like that. So I think that looks pretty cute. So we have our shapes. Uh, if we want to move everything up, so let's take everything and then we'll use our gizmo and let's just move everything up above that little grid. Okay. And remember, none of my tools are showing up because I have multiple, I have multiple uh, meshes selected. So if you ever run into that where the tools aren't coming up, it's either because you have multiple uh, meshes selected or you haven't validated because that's definitely going to happen. And you can just tap on one of them and then your tools will come back. Okay. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, there are a bunch of other things that I kind of want to do, but um, I'll do one more quick one with the crease. See his arm? I don't want any color, so I'm going to make sure that I don't have, make sure this is off. And I just want to add a little definition to this arm. So I'm just going to use the crease. And I'm just going to draw, whoops, I have symmetry on. See, I have symmetry on, so it tried to do it on this side. And that's another thing that you have to be careful of with symmetry. So I'm going to turn it off. And I'm just going to draw down. And just give some separation. Like so. And then I'll just take smooth and just sort of smooth around it a little bit, just so it's nice and clean. I always smooth out. Anytime I manipulate the mesh or make something, I smooth. I just smooth it so it looks nice and clean. So then we just have a little more definition there. And last but not least, um, post-process, uh, very important. Post-process, when you tap that, then you have all these options that come up, ambient occlusion, and you can play around with those to see uh, the differences that they make, but they make a world of difference. You have your depth of field here. Um, we can probably get rid of the reference image by going like that. And we can also change the background. Let's see, what color background do we want? Let's see how this looks. We'll keep it dark. So that might be easier for my screen to, to handle. We'll do something like this. Okay, so remember we're on post-process. So you have all these options that you can play around with, Bloom. Um, and there's all these options here uh, that you can go through and play around with. But once you set the post process, it's good to do all your sculpting with this off. Um, but I usually turn it on when I do the lighting. So the lighting is the next step. And that's right next to post process, this little light here. Uh, this is your environment. So this is all of your ambient light. If you walked outside, that's the environment. Um, so that's just overall. But a good rule of thumb is to turn that off. So now there's no environment light. And then you can add a light here. So this light, this is the or this is the directional light. This is the default, uh, and the, the directional light is kind of like the sun. See this white arrow? That's where the sun will be pointing. So if I rotate it this way, it's almost like the sun is revolving around him. So let's do. So let's do something like this. And remember, there's two ways to get to your light. Uh, right now, there's a little there's a little option, but it's behind this box. So I'm going to tap this and make it longer. Lights will always have these little boxes. And this brings you into the light settings that you can play around with. You can change the color of the light. You know, if you want it a little warm, something like that. I'll keep it white for now and you can adjust the intensity. 
uh, and each light will have different options so I think this is good for for this one so let's add another light but this time I'm gonna tap on this light that we made I'm gonna change the color just so there's no confusion and we'll do So we'll do a kind of like a blue, sort of like to match our background, and I'll turn the intensity up just so it's easier to see. Whoops. Okay, so now I want this to be a spotlight, so we have our options, and I'll change this to spot. And see how this light changes? So now it's a spotlight. And a good, something that I always do with lights I'll move this one back and face it towards him. There we go. So I like the lights to come from different sides and sort of from behind the model. So something like this. So you want to put your lights usually to the sides you know you can put some in the front in the back just play around and see what you like and I think that looks okay so I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna tap on our op on our light and I'm gonna hit clone so now we have two lights there but I'm gonna bring this one over and then I'm gonna use the green to turn it around so that he's getting some light on this side too. But let's change the color of this one. Let's change it to, yeah, let's change it to like a yellowish color. Okay. Maybe I'll move it a little further back. I'll lower the intensity a little bit. It's a little bright on him. You can also make the cone angle bigger. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Let's add one more light. Right down the right down the pike. Pipe? Pike? So we'll add a last light. We'll make it white. We'll make it a spotlight. And I just want to tap on it so I can figure out where it is in space. So it can get kind of confusing. It's this light here. So I'm going to move it back. And then I'm going to angle it towards him. I'll move it up. Just so he has some light right on his face. So I'll bring it up. So something like this. So I'm gonna move it a little further back. And this will just take practice, like maneuvering the lights. It'll be confusing at first, but the more you do it, then it'll get a lot easier. So now he has a light right on his face. And then lastly, I go back to all the lights. I turn the environment on, but I turn it all the way down. See this exposure here? I turn it all the way down and then I bring it back up little by little just to sort of get that ambient light in there. But I can still see the lights that I put in. And I'm also gonna change this light because I don't like the shadow it's making. So. Let me lower the intensity of this light. Something like that, okay. So I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna just place it in the center. I'm gonna get a frame I like. I'm gonna to go to this camera. And remember we were doing orthographic, I'm gonna change it to perspective. So now once you change it to perspective, this is a more realistic look. And you can also adjust the, uh, like your camera lens. So that makes a big, that makes a big difference. So play around with that, get it to where you like it, and then hit add view. 
So this will save this view. So we'll name this one hero. So you can save the view. Let's say you wanna do another, like a side view. Something like this. So then you can also save this view as well. Side. And it's very useful because if you want to change the lighting or do anything, then you can always just go back to that view. Side view, hero view, side view. So we'll go to hero. And uh, I always try to, I always export at the highest resolution. So I'm going to go to this toggle here. And render resolution, it'll automatically be at 125. I like to raise mine up to 2, like that. So, and then we have our little, uh, our little marshmallow guy. I think he looks pretty good. You can go through the lights. Sometimes I go through the lights and I just sort of make sure that they're all actually making me look better. Yeah, they look pretty good. This one I can lower the intensity a little bit. But I think I like them. And remember you can go, you can change, you know, if you want to change the color. You can long press on the eyes and you can change the color. I kind of like that. You know, maybe you even want to change the roughness. I like that. It kind of looks like the that candy that's used to be on that flat tape. Maybe we maybe we want maybe we don't want the mouth to be as black. Maybe we can lighten it up a little bit. So all things to think about. Maybe we want to have it be a little rougher. So there's tons of options. There's tons of things you can do. Um, I really don't like the way that this is uh, poking out. I want to make it softer. So I'm going to have to subdivide it because I like the shape. So I'm going to subdivide. And then I'm going to use smooth. And the reason why I subdivide it again is because um, otherwise the mesh will be, too, the clay will be too soft. So now that I've subdivided it, And just smooth out the edges. Like that. I can even use flatten. If I want to flatten it. And then I'll smooth it out again. Just keep it nice and smooth. So that's when just getting used to all your tools and things um, comes in handy. Okay, I like this view too. I don't know if it's as, as different than Hero. So now to export, you just go back to this folder you go all the way down here. It's probably good to save it first. So let's save. Um, we'll go with Power Puff. So we'll scroll all the way down to here, Render. Uh, and we'll just do Screen for now. Export. And here's what we have. And then we just export it. Save image, and there you go. We'll do a little turntable. So this was very, very, I know this is long, but there's so much to this application. And I would recommend taking my Skillshare class. It's a complete beginner class. I go through all of the tools. We use all of the tools. I go through everything from top to bottom. So it's very much like this class, except for I just, I go through all of the tools so you can see what they do. Uh, and it's just much more uh, in depth than this class. Uh, and I'll post the link below. 
but it's a really fun app. It's a really great app. Once you just start thinking about things in shapes, um, and as you can see here, it doesn't really take that much to, to make a cool sculpt. You just have to have the idea. And um, yeah, I think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. And I know if you try it, you'll like it. So again, I recommend, I recommend the Skillshare classes. I have about five uh, Nomad Sculpt classes. So the more that, the more you do, then you can get into the uh, character designs and the more uh, in-depth sculpts. Um, all right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll catch you all in the next video. If you're interested in 3D modeling, then this is a great place to start. What's up guys, my name is Dave Reed, AKA Drug Free Dave. So you may know me as a 2D illustrator, cute animals, things like that. But this class today is very, very exciting. It's something that I've been working on a lot and that's 3D modeling. So if you wanna get into 3D modeling, this is a great beginner course for someone who's never done 3D, doesn't understand 3D, and just wants to start fresh, start from scratch. And let me tell you, it is so addicting, it's so fun. It actually helps my 2D illustration. It helps me think of things in 3D because you're actually working in 3D. So we're gonna use Nomad Sculpt. It's an amazing 3D application. It's only $15, it's, a, it's just a one-time buy, so it's not like a, a prescription. Prescription? Prescription? Subscription. It's not a subscription. Uh, I use it on the iPad Pro 2021. Go to Nomad Scope website, make sure it works, make sure you can download it, obviously, before you take this class, because I don't want to get you all excited and then you're not able to do it. Again, it's worth the $15. It's amazing. I think I know you're going to love it once you get started.